of the Sunset Strip, Rodney on the Rock, the king of breaking artists, Mr. Rodney Bingenheimer. It's so exciting to have you in Sunset Sound. To yeah, this was the place to be. <laughs> it was. A lot of great albums. A lot. We were going looking at the gold albums, and mm-hmm. a lot of those bands you broke. Yeah. Van Halen. Van Halen, for sure. We were just talking about Van Halen. You just heard the demo. Yeah. Right, with the devil. So... David Lee Roth, you had seen them around town at Gazzari's and Gazzari's, yeah, myself and and Hernando Cartwright Jr. and I used to hang out at Gazzari's and and they'd have their van parked out in front of Gazzari's and, and everyone would be like meeting in the van. <laughs> wow! So the first time you saw them was at Gazzari's, and then yeah. you orchestrated the infamous. Starwood, two nights that mm-hmm. Ted Templeman discovered them, and Marshall Burl from the Whiskey. Yeah. So you got them that gig at the Starwood. At the Starwood. So you DJed at the Starwood at the time? Or? Yeah, we had like, Starwood was the place you could wander around. There's different rooms. They had a balcony, and, and they had a room at the fireplace, and people would sit around there. Then you go into the disco part, and I'd be playing punk rock and new wave music. And yeah, and then Marshall ended up managing him. Then. Yeah, Marshall Burrow. Wow. Yeah. How? Mountain, why did you Mountain think Mountain Burrow's? He's related to Mountain Burrow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Amazing. And Eddie Nash owned the Starwood, the yes. gangster, which is tied in with the Wonderland murders. And is that <laughs> Eddie still alive? Huh? Is Eddie Nash still alive? I, think he, I, think he <laughs> I don't even want to mention his name. <laughs> Uh, how did you? F- I want to come back to Van Halen, obviously, but how did you initially make it to the Sunset Strip? Because you're from Mountain View, California. Yeah, I grew up in San Jose and Mountain View, and what brought you down here? Hollywood. You were excited. Exciting. You knew Sunset the, Strip. The music. The clubs, music, and uh, up there in San Francisco was more hippie. <laughs> yeah. What memories do you have? You've been in Sunset Sound. You were here when the the Stones were in here, right? Yeah, the Stones, Frank Zappa, and I did the GTOs album here. And that was the girl group that yeah. Frank kind of produced. And yeah, was that Actually, in this room? This room, yes. Really? Yes. Because <laughs> Frank, uh, you know, Juizel Zappa is a good friend of the studio. He sits in on uh, with us sometimes on this show. But uh, Hot Rats was done yeah. partially in this room. But uh, and you were in the film Uncle Meat. You had a part in that, right? Yeah. That's incredible. So you've been in this room before, in 1969 it would have been then? Yeah, yeah, GTOs. <laughs> what were, you, were you here just hanging out during tracking? Yeah, and then recording the Rodney Bingenheimer song. <laughs> oh, yes, that's, I forgot that song. I watched your documentary. I've seen it numerous times, but they, it's in that yeah. film. That's a great, uh, a great doc about music, about your life, about... You know the Sunset Strip back in those days, and well, just it could have been more Sunset Strip, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting, though. You've had such an, an impact on people's lives, and mm-hmm. you know you're a staple when people think of Hollywood, from your club to mm-hmm. K Rock to Van Ham. I mean, every band. You know, David yeah. Bowie. You know, yeah. you broke David Bowie. Mm-hmm. That's English disco. When you hear music, especially back in those days. How did you know, like, a hit band or artist or song? I Just don't know, there's something that clicks in my brain or something that does it. Really? Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. It's like a great producer almost. You know? Yeah, you, yeah. But you deserve so much recognition for breaking these artists and also just, you know, giving them airplay. Believe and, it or not, I got just about more gold records than you guys have. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I got a Van Halen gold record. You're included on the band. liner notes, aren't you, Van yeah, Halen one? first album, yeah. That's so incredible. What's your thoughts on Hollywood and from then to now? It's completely different, obviously. It's completely different. There is no Hollywood. Hollywood is deader than a doornail. There's nothing in Hollywood right now. I hate to say it, but I'm the mayor of the Sunset Strip, and I could say it. Of course. <laughs> it's not, you know, even from the 90s till now, you know, it's just mm-hmm. completely different. The music yeah. is kind well, of... at least in the 90s, they had the whiskey and all that going, and... Yeah. Viper room and now it's a pay-to-play kind of scenario at the whiskey and yeah. you know uh, I go to the Viper room sometimes they'll have good bands in there and um, before the pandemic would you go out much to listen to music ever all the time yeah really still you I know. haven't been out in, in over a year yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were you doing the the radio show from home 
Yeah, it's, you know, I'm on Sirius XM, yep. Little Stevens Underground Garage. Yeah. Every Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it's all over the yeah. know, country. Do you like being on Sirius? Oh, yes. It's great. It's the only place to be. Yeah. Say yeah. whatever you want. The Howard cool Stern DJ, kind of broke that. All initially. the DJs are all cool. Every, every DJ on the uh, Underground Garage, or even Sirius, are connected in music. Whether they're in a band, or they've written for bands, or produced a band. Every DJ is connected with music. That's great. <laughs> what's, um, what's a band that you've heard recently that you really like? I got it. So many. Uh, this band Jossie from uh, Nashville. Kind of a boy influence. Really? Mm -hmm. When you um, you were a disc jockey at the Starwood, and you were the man about town. Everybody knew you had the girls. You knew the best music. <laughs> I had the girls. <laughs> you the Those girls days are, are long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, every picture I've seen of you, and there's a lot of them, there's at least 20 beautiful women around you. But well, women like to pose in front of cameras. <laughs> yeah. How did the English disco, 1972, uh, was yeah. it? Yeah. 1972, mm -hmm. 75, so two and a half, three years, the club's yeah. open. Did someone approach you to start a club? Yeah. Um, this guy, he works for, um, he's a movie producer now, um, Barry Barnholz. And my friend uh, Tom Ayers, Tom Ayers was a producer. He produced uh, Gene Vincent and Sir Douglas Quintet. And he did uh, Hot Pastrami by the Dartels. Yeah. And he, and he was a good friend of mine. And he was my partner in the club, Tom Ayers. And he approached you and said, Rodney, you know, you're the man about town. You're the mayor of the Sunset Troop. We should start a club. Yeah, and we did. And we didn't play any disco music. It was all rock, glam, glitter music. David Boy, T Rex, Mata Hoopo, Slade. Wow, Mata Slade, Hupo. that's cool. And every night, I mean, it was just the who's who of the entertainment industry from Led Zeppelin to Bowie to. Yeah. New York Dolls. New York Dolls. Yeah. Zolar X would play there. That's the question. So Brian Kehu, who's a music historian, engineer, he's a keyboard player for The Who. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in and played some Van Halen demo. He actually played the room mics that uh, were going on during Van Halen tracking. Uh -huh. And David Lee Roth goes, uh, he said something on that. I'll have to put a clip of it <laughs> up. But he said, um, it must be nice to be Earthlings. <laughs> well, he was trying to imitate Volar X, which yeah. was a band that would dress up as space people, yeah, kind of. Martians and yeah. platforms. There was a weird group in LA called Zolar X, and Zolar X is a favorite of mine. They were weird space people, and they were kind of hard rock, like Rush, sort of, but weirder, and they had antennas, and they had spacesuits, and they're literally playing around LA at Rodney, Rodney's English Disco and clubs like that, but everybody knew them because they always pretended to be space people and they were always talking in funny voices. They even went to the supermarket with a boom box playing space noises while they went shopping, you know. Solar X. Yeah, and there's a guy who, yeah. a friend of ours, yeah, saw them at up. the Starwood. <laughs> You'll find them. <laughs> There'll be a picture for the, for the interview here you can throw up. But one of our friends saw them coming out of the Starwood and a gang of guys beat up one of the guys in the parking lot and he said, he got up, he said, Earthlings are ridiculous in his space voice. <laughs> And here on one of the Van Halen tapes, David Lee Roth is copying them and talking about humans and so forth. You'll hear oh, this wow. one. Here comes a little chat. And Dave uses this. Ready? Ready? Come on. Stand by. The of tomorrow. Oh. Come on, Dave. Keep close your door. Now. Humans are fun. <laughs> Now, Zolarex did play with Van Halen. I think one of the last Zolarex shows was opening for them about 1980, which doesn't make any sense to me at all, although they both had kind of a hard rock sound. They didn't fit the audience at all, but it's funny that he obviously was making fun of them on the tape here, and I don't think almost anybody else but me and a few people would get that, but they knew who Zolarex yeah. were. Yeah. I want a Zolarex t-shirt now. You can buy them online. Really? Uh, they have Zolarex masks, in fact. I got one of those, too. I should have worn it. Yeah. But they were the house band yeah. at uh, English Disco. I played there quite a few times. Yeah. Wow. All dressed up. And, and, they, and, and Tom Snyder, 
he was the host of the Tomorrow Show. Uh huh. Did an episode in there and interviewed Dolores on his show, and me and of course some of the girls in the DJ booth and the VIP booth. Wow. You've been around all these legends your whole life. What's, you know, from Led Zeppelin to Bowie, just everybody. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing that kind of makes somebody a superstar? What's the one thing they all have in common, from Zeppelin to Bowie to, to have that certain yeah. thing? Just that they remember. And they, they always, they're always nice. They remember where their roots came from and yeah. the people that helped them out and stuff. They stay true to themselves, yeah. and regardless of all the women, the fame, the records. And Led Zeppelin, the whole band would come quite a few times. They would land at the airport, LAX, get in their limousines, and head straight to the English Disco, which was over on Sunset Boulevard, 7561 Sunset. That's the actual address. That's incredible. They, um, that's now a karate studio, right? No, it was. Actually, it's a Gibson guitar thing. Oh, yeah. is it? Okay. Yeah. It was a karate studio for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, disco kind of come in and then the club just, you know... Yeah, when the actual disco came in and then they started moving out to the Sugar Shack and other... Was the Starwood open at the same time? Yeah, and Starwood. Yeah, and they would do all kinds of music at the Starwood, right? Yeah. It wasn't just metal or rock or... Mm -hmm. It was everything. I know you're kind of got your finger on the pulse always, but... How does fame compare to the 60s and 70s till now? Like the Kardashians and that kind of, you know, TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. and all this. You're not on social media, I take no, it. Yeah. Not. <laughs> you still don't even have a cell phone, right? I have a web page. Okay. It's Rodney Bingenheimer uh, on Facebook. Okay. So, yeah, there's. No, it's, Ro no, it's Rodney on the Rock, R O C K. Okay. Uh, at Facebook. And we can find out information about you, and yeah. that's really cool. There's my playlist is up there, and when did Cindy Kona helps out on that. And nice. When did fame kind of just become fake almost? You know, um, when people were famous for not doing anything. You notice that now, yeah. right? Yeah, it's not the same. It, in the early days, you have these magazines like Tiger Beat or Photo Play, 16, and, and all of like David Cassidy and all those people would be the stars at the time. But now you get your TMZ and, and all they talk about is politics and they don't even go to the airport anymore and interview people. I like that better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people coming off the planes. <laughs> what Do you, um, you know, I remember Jimi Hendrix, you had some encounters with him. Oh yeah. Where'd you see Jimi at? At the Whiskey A Go Go's with Ed Cariff. He's a famous photographer, and we're walking down Sunset in front of the whiskey, and Hilton Valentine from The Animals said, come on in, don't you see my new artist, because he managed Jimmy. So Jimmy was up on stage with no band, just him playing guitar, and that was at the Whiskey A Go-Go. Were you just blown away, or yeah. was it kind of, yeah? And then, of course, I've seen Jimmy many times before, and then at the Monterey Pop Festival. And then there was a band called the cake, not the guy cake. There was a, a band called The Cake, okay, and there were girls, three girls, and they were recording at Gold Star Recording Studios, produced by uh, Charlie Green and Brian Stone, and I brought Jimi Hendrix. We went in his Stingray to see The Cake, and he ended up hanging out with The Cake, and then The Cake had a house up in the Hollywood Hills that was a round house. <laughs> How appropriate. Jimi Hendrix had a stingray? Yeah. <laughs> he could drive? It was a rent, you know, rented stingray, okay. powder blue. Incredible. He rode in the stingray with Jimmy. And you guys went to Gold Star on Santa Monica, where it used to be, obviously. Yeah. They should have kept I, that place open. I used to go to Gold, I used to live in Gold I went to all the Sonny and Cher recording sessions. There. Mark and Tina T Turner, River Deep Mountain High. And that would have all been Phil Spector, too, yeah, in the Wall of Sound. And sound. Yeah, he was always there and always took care of everybody that showed up. Sonny and Cher were kind of like mother and father to you a little bit. They yeah, took they, you in. They looked after of. me and took care of me and went to all the Cher sessions. And You were just a staple in all the music, the coolest things ever. Yeah. yeah. What was Phil Spector like? He liked an audience. He was always entertaining. He was the star. It wasn't the star themselves. It was him. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, he and was, he'd always have a studio jammed with people. Double drummers, four guitars. Yeah. He was a musician, so he understood the yeah, guitar, he too. Yeah, played guitar. He played, had records out, too. Where were you when you heard about him and Lana and the whole murder? And was that just so shocking to you? That was really shocking, yeah. Did you have um, any recollection of him carrying guns back then and stuff? Or was... Um, not, well, he's always fooling around. You never know. Yeah. Because he always had bodyguards. Because, you know, he, he was a really short guy. Mm -hmm. And one time he got robbed out on Sunset getting in his car. Wow. So then he started carrying a gun in with bodyguards and protection. Yeah, and yeah he got robbed. And then he went to Fairfax High. Whenever he go to the restroom, people would always pick on him, and even guys would hold him down and they'd piss on him. And oh my gosh! Yeah. So that probably you know that was festering in him for a long time, a lot of yeah. anger and stuff. Yeah. So I'm the biggest Van Halen fan, and we like to talk. You know, Eddie's mm -hmm. passing was horrible, oh, um, yeah. so sudden. You know, in last October, and you know, in this room. Mm -hmm. So much Van Halen work was done. You know, we, majority of people, I think, like the Sunset Sound better yeah. than the 5150 sessions. What's mm. uh, your take on that? Yeah, I like it here better. Yeah, yeah. Van Halen 1, Women and Children. I feel more at home here. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever go up to 5150? No. No? Um, so you see Van Halen and the Guzaris. Why did you think they'd be a good fit for uh, Starwood? Because of all the beer drinkers, we noticed that we watched the audience. I noticed they were on stage. They had this bomb on stage, like a, like a bomb, an actual bomb. Yeah. And they just like so. It was so loud. It was just unbelievable. And the place was packed, and people were drinking so much beer. And then I told Eddie Na Eddie Nash about that, and, and that's when they got him in the Starwood. So Eddie, you told Eddie Nash there's a great band that's and kind of metal. There's another guy that started with I can't think of it. Yeah, I think it was David Knight. Yeah. How prevalent was Paola back in the radio days? Of was that uh, something that was really going on, or was that earlier in the '60s? That was er earlier in the '60s. And you could actually do it then, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I never had anything with that. That's for sure. The labels never. I mean, they. Radio would break artists then. They yeah, needed yeah, the radio more yeah, yeah. than anything. They didn't have all these social media platforms or anyways. Mm -hmm. And what happened, the, the record companies would throw these amazing parties and they'd have everybody at these parties and make sure you're on the list, you had to be on the list. And Yeah. And was, I guess that was a way of payola. <laughs> well, Led Zeppelin, when they came in here and mm -hmm. tracked and did mixing, um, they closed the whole place down. They were like closed down Sunset oh, yeah. in 1972. Did you ever have any, you know, Van Halen, obviously, Eddie Van Halen, the band is great. Did you have any reservations about uh, David Lee Roth's vocals, kind of? Did you think he was a great vocalist? Yeah, he's like telling, the, he's like, like one of the regular dudes that would come to see them, you know? Yeah. David Lee Roth, you thought he was a good singer at the yeah, time? And yeah, yeah. Ted Templeman kind of was thinking of replacing him initially with Sammy oh. Hagar. Oh, no. So, yeah, you loved it. it was St always stick with the original. That's my saying. It was the four-headed monster. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about uh, the GTOs. How did you hook up with Frank Zappa? Mm, Frank Zappa was a regular at Cantor's. He'd always come in with his troops of dancers, and we'd always sit in the back, and Miss Pamela. Yeah. Okay. Pamela DeBar? Yeah, Pamela DeBar. Pamela Miller was her real name. Oh, wow. And she was one of the dancers. They would always go to all the clubs, and they'd be with this guy, Vito, and dancing and dancing, and go to the valley, and they'd go to any club f for free. They'd have a whole troop of people. So then um, they formed the GTOs, Miss Pamela and Miss Mercy. In fact, I brought Miss Mercy here when the Stones were recording mixing Beggar's Banquet about Miss Mercy and then I saw Sky Saxon from the Seeds out there. I go, hey Sky, we're going to a stone session. You want to come? He says, sure. He comes in. I don't think Mick Jagger appreciated that <laughs> because Sky Saxon was known as the American Mick Jagger. Wow. And then uh, did you go over to Frank's house in the Laurel Canyon? Oh yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. One time I showed up at the Vanilla Fudge. <laughs> I showed up and 
And Mick Jagger was there sitting on the floor. We all hung out at Frank's house. He had the bowling alley downstairs. Yeah, that house is, uh, they sold that house to Lady Gaga a couple years ago, Oh, actually. that the house you got? Yeah. yeah. Really? Wow. Yep. What music was big around the time of Van Halen? So, like, you have 1976, they're playing around town, but punk, punk. disco. Yeah, the punk. Punk was just breaking, coming in. The Dam, the Sex Pistols, the Ramones. Yeah. That was 76. Did you, when did you first meet the Ramones? Was that in New York or out here? On my very first show. They were my in-studio guests. I, Rodney on the Rock, the first guest was the Ramones? Yeah. That's the Ramones incredible. and another band called Widowmaker, which is uh, one of the members of Matahupo. I remember the first song I played was <clears throat> Beat on the Brat. And we used to get phone calls. We used to take them on the air, and people were threatening, saying, you're playing it at the wrong speed. <laughs> <laughs> and and K-Rock was both AM and FM at the time. Imagine hearing that on AM radio. <laughs> <laughs> so David Lee Roth, how did he get in the studio to play you? Because he had the demo on tape that Gene Simmons did with him at Electric Lady. Yeah, which I... And you broke ra- Running With The Devil. You were the first person to play it on the radio. And I told Kiss to go down and see them at the Starwood. Oh, so Gene Simmons was at the Starwood, too, in that, uh, that two-day sh- weekend there. Yeah. The two nights. Yeah. And then he invited them to New York, and, and that's when they cut the demo. Why didn't that demo circulate and somebody sign him right off the strength of that? You have a big artist like Gene Simmons, who's got a great band here, and I'm surprised they were still around for Ted, Temple, Ted Templeman to swoop up. I know. That's weird. Very strange. But, so then David Lee Roth has the tape. Mm-hmm. How did you hear it initially, or how did you get in touch with David? Did they? Well, he came up to because remember David Lee Roth lived down the street from K Rock, lived in Pasadena. Okay. And his dad, a famous eye doctor, in Pasadena. And then, so he gets in the studio, and you knew and who they were. Knocks on the door. Oh, really? And here's David Lee Roth, <laughs> <up a tape. laughs> cassette. <laughs> And he goes, I want, to pl- I want to play this on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> he was really the networker for them, wasn't he, in yeah. the early years? I mean, he yeah. was really moving around and... He was always promoting the Getting band. them gigs. Yeah. What's your favorite Van Halen song? Ah, Running with the Devil, for sure. To think about and, that was the first song. And that... You Really Got Me, and then K-Rock added that to the playlist, You Really Got Me, a kink song yeah. they covered. So that was the first uh, Van Halen song out of the playlist, was yeah. You Really Got Me. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. So you met David Bowie at your club yeah. initially. That was the first time you met David? Actually, it was when I worked at Mercury Records, and I was sent out to pick him up at the airport, and they were going to put him up in a hotel. And I go, no, you can't put David up in a hotel. He's, he's a special person. you got to put him up in a house. So my partner, Tom Ayers, had this amazing house on Rock, Rockingham. Oh, that was, and it was the O.J. Simpson house, wasn't it? Didn't no. they live in that? No. Somebody lived in that O.J. Simpson house on Rockingham in Brentwood. Uh, was it Sonny and Cher? No, that was, um, it was an actor, um, famous movie star. Uh, that's where I saw the Beatles on TV, it was at his house. Was, oh, you were at uh, the... Robert Mitchum. Yep. <laughs> Wow, you have such a great memory, <laughs> unbelievable. With all the stuff you've experienced, <laughs> your memory is sharp as a tack. Yeah, well. <laughs> Do you want to take a, a break and go eat real quick before the food gets bad? I don't know, is food here yet? Yeah, I saw him come in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. We just took a little break for the listeners here to uh, have some fish and chips. We ate at the Cat and Fiddle. Thank you, Cat and Fiddle, if you're listening. Another mm-hmm. great Hollywood landmark. One of the We have a bunch of fan questions here, and one of the questions is... Um, what are your top five favorite? Here, I want to know his top five favorite albums of the '80s, and also top five LA restaurant restaurants besides Cantor's. Oh, um, <laughs> Musso and Frank's. Musso and Frank's. That's Ch- one. Chipotle. Chipotle. Denny's. Denny's on Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard. Um, sunset. Okay. Oh, it is on Sunset. Yeah, at mm-hmm. the end by the 101. Mm-hmm. What's uh, two more you got? Um, What's that place that we, we go to? Uh, Swingers. Swingers. The 101 coffee shop? And Norms. Oh, Norms. 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 On La Cienega? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. 
What are your top five albums of the 1980s? The Go Go's. The Go Go's. Mm -hmm. Beauty to the Beat. What? Are, what's a few more of uh, your top five albums of the 1980s? Blondie. Blondie. Any you Blondie. broke that. Blondie. Broke her too. Ramones. The Ramones. You broke the Ramones. Mm -hmm. The Clash. Because that came out a little bit earlier. Devo. Devo. I'm actually playing them this Sunday. Devo was kind of Warner Brothers band before Van Halen. They were really pushing yeah. Devo. Mm -hmm. And then Van Halen was... I remember I introduced them at the Starwood. <laughs> you inter introduced them Devo. at the Starwood as yeah. well? Wow. Yeah, he was really into them, who turned er me on to them and stuff, was Tony Basil. Remember Tony Basil? I know the name. Did the song Hey Mickey? Oh, yeah, 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 That's an 80s one, yeah. Hey, Mickey, you're so fine. And she was a movie star. She was in the Monkey's movie, Head, and she was in all the Beach Party movies and, and all the Annette and Frankie movies and all that. Rodney, living legend, he once invited me to sit with him at Cantor's. Such an <laughs> honor. Thank you for always being so kind and introducing us to new music. All right. Eric Grams asks... How did the v Van Halen brothers get along with Dave during the early days? Were they close? They seemed to be very close. Yeah, they were like a four-headed monster of you know, <laughs> brotherhood. Hung out in that van all night long you know, before they'd play at Gazzari's. So they'd sit outside in their van, yeah. smoking doobies, talking mm -hmm. to girls, yeah. writing the set list. I wonder where that van is. That'd be a pretty cool... Uh, yeah, it would be. <laughs> where is that van? Um, and then we've kind of discussed this earlier, but Eric also asks, when did you first see Van Halen play live? Was it as everyone has reported? So the first time you saw them live was at Gazzari's. Gazzari's, yeah. And who was running Gazzari's then? Gazzari? Bill Gazzari. Yeah, and he would book the talent, it's too. his club, yeah. Oh, wow. I wonder how he got in touch with them or heard about them. Oh. They were playing all over L.A. then, right? Yeah. All right, let's go. They, they play with the Runaways and... I, uh, you know, I, I have so many bands that I want to talk to you about, but um, Tom Petty, the first time anyone ever heard Tom Petty on the radio was uh, Roddy on the Rock. Yeah, my show. What song did you play? Uh, Do you remember? I Bought the Law. Really? Yeah. How did that get to you? His manager or? Yeah, I guess, I guess he bought it along. That's just, uh, it's so classic though and so important how you were the first one to play all these bands. And yeah. were you getting stuff before? I mean... K Rock obviously was Once gigantic. I always go to Denny's or Canners, and people would bring me tapes, and because that's right, Denny's was right next to the Guitar Center. That's where everybody would go. Yeah, with their instruments and stuff, and they'd stop by Denny's. <laughs> And know that Roddy would be in there, and yeah. you, they'd slip you a tape, and then would you listen to it at home yeah. first? And sometimes they'd come to the studio and give me a tape, and on Social Distortion and bands like that, and I put the tape on, and they're in their car, starting their car, getting ready to leave, and there's the music being played, <laughs> their own music, on the car radio. Green Day as well? Green Day. Did you play them the first? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What song? When I Come Around? Mm-hmm. What a great bass line and everything about that yeah. song. When did you first hear Coldplay? God, when I was in London. Were you living in London? You know, just visiting, you know, getting new music and stuff. And, and someone told me about them. I actually went and bought the record at Tower Records at Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> and it was just like an indie album kind yeah. of? Yeah, and Yellow. And they had the big hit song Yellow on it. Mm -hmm. And you were like, wow, this but is But I think great. I played the, the demo version. Yeah, I played the demo version of Yellow before the album. I got that from Lisa. I used to have a segment on my show, London Calling. And I think Lisa got me the, the demo. And you just loved it? Yeah. It was slow, but at that time it was just so different. Yeah. Great vocal patterns and acoustic mm -hmm. guitar. And did, did people compare them to like Radiohead in yeah. early on? Mm hmm. And I didn't really see that, though. I know. A lot of things that you deserve credit for, but the Sex Pistols being one of them. Mm. There would be no sex. You broke the Sex Pistols in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, Sid Vicious is on, called into your radio station and yeah. said, thank you very much, Rodney, for you know playing our music and exposing us here in the States, correct? Yeah. He didn't actually thank me. He was just being Sid, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I remember that. I used to play that on my 
anniversary show. I do an anniversary show every year. And I play segments from that, that interview. And did Johnny Rotten was on it as well. Did the program directors give you just freedom to do whatever you want back then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could play anything you wanted. I did, yeah. That's great. And all so late. Freedom Radio. And same as it is now with uh, little Steven. He says, whatever Rodney plays, that's what we want. How do you feel about the music industry today? What music industry? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there is no music in concerts. Were you still going to concerts all the time? What's your favorite place in LA to watch a concert? Santa Monica. <clears throat> Wait a minute, excuse me. Santa Monica Civic. I always like that's where I first saw Ziggy Stardust. That's a story we got. Let's dive. We you worked at Mercury Records. Mm -hmm. They say that he's flying into town, David Bowie. Yeah. And you said I'm going to go pick him up. Yeah. What was your title at Mercury? I just did a... Were you an A&R or...? FM promotion. Okay. And take the artist, you know, to the Yeah, FM all the station. cool spots. Yeah. So David flies in, lands. Did you just pick him up by yourself? Are you in a limousine? Yeah, or? by myself. Just I had, had my partner's Cadillac. So we went, picked him up, and we went to eat at Ali Hammond's, that was a restaurant on La Cienega Boulevard. What do you say to David Bowie when <laughs> he comes in from Europe? And yeah, he said, "Wow." Well, he says he's heard about me and all this stuff, and and I was the guy to see. And and we I took him to Tom Ayers' house. He stayed there, and Tom Ayers had a little studio in his house, and he managed Gene Vincent. And there is a recording of. David Bowie with Gene Vincent. I had it on cassette, but I can't find it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, how did I you played it once on my show. How did you manage to, um, when did you start collecting? Back in the 60s? Just when, when I was a kid growing up. Just loved keeping collect. things and the, the stories that go along there with these items. A, there used to be a record store on Castro Street in Mountain View called Ray, Ray's, Re, Ray's Records. Mm-hmm. And I'd go there and see Billboard magazine and Cashbox and, and all the little promo things they would send to the record store. You're growing up in Mountain View, you know, seeing the magazines of all these great bands and famous people, and then you became one here in Los Angeles. Were you kind of pinching yourself then, or did you just have a determination to be uh, in the it, record it, industry? It just sort of happened, and Sonny and Cher really gave me the start. I, I'm always with them and at the recording sessions. And Where did you first meet them? I met them at, Go at Gold Star. No, no, wait a minute. I met them. They played up in Mountain View. Actually, it was Sam Mateo. And they're playing with the Dave Clark Five, um, the Astronauts, and Dick Michaels. And I met them there in San Mateo. At the, it was one of these round theaters. What were you Something doing in the round? Were you in the record industry then, though? How did no, you get I was, backstage? I was or a kid. You just said, kind of wandered backstage? Or? Cher said, he's got hair like Sonny. Because <laughs> 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 nobody had hair like that. Were Sonny and Cher's sessions only at Gold Star primarily? Yeah, all Gold Star. The Wrecking Crew and yeah. Hal Blaine and Don Randy and... Carol Kay. All Carol Kay and... Yeah, Carol played on, well, and Don played on some Zappa material. I mean, they played on everything. Don yeah. was in here uh, a few weeks ago, and he played, said he played on over 14,000. Insane, just the amount of material he's been on. He would do four sessions a day, start yeah. at Capitol, come to Sunset, then to Gold Star, you yeah. know, and just four-hour sessions. Won't we'll bang him out. Yeah, and then they all go to Pink's hot dog stand after. Do you like Pink's? Yeah. I, really I like, like the it. veggie dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite studio in L.A.? Yeah, Sunset Sound. And I used to go to all the RCA sessions. Uh, yeah, which is L.A. Film School now. Yeah, I saw Jefferson Airplane there. And uh, the Rolling Stones, they're doing uh, December's Children album. Wow. I was there for that. And Donald Rama play, recorded yeah. there. <laughs> you know... Uh, Mick Jagger pretty well. I yeah. mean, you hung out with them a lot, didn't mm -hmm. you? Where did you first meet them? At a show or a studio? Or? Well, they played with the Beach Boys when I was a kid in really? San Jose, San, San Jose Civic. Were they opening up for the Beach Boys? Yeah. 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what an opener. Tell them about the Cow Palace and all the shows up there in San Francisco, there, yeah. yeah. You were great friends with Kim Folly. Where did you guys first come in contact with? I met him when I first came to Hollywood, and he was at, in the parking lot at Ben Frank's. It used to be a restaurant where everyone not go inside and eat. They just hang out in the parking lot. There'd be thousands of kids out in the parking lot. And I saw him there in the parking lot, and I walked up to him and said, your name is on the popsicles and icicles, the mermaids. He goes, I produced that. I pro <laughs> Yeah. And just hit it off and yeah. got each other's number and hung out for a couple decades. Yeah. And he managed the, the runaways. Yeah. I, he, I was there in the room when he put them all together and stuff. They had some negative things to say about Kim later in the years. Is that something you want to touch down on at all? <laughs> well, Kim was very outgoing and <laughs> he was always joking. You couldn't tell if he was serious or he was joking. Yeah. He passed away a few years ago from cancer, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of in your life? Uh, I guess my radio shows. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you really deserve a lot of credit that you know for breaking these bands to exposing them, and people trusted you to know mm -hmm. what the cool, new, fresh music was. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, they knew that if they listened to your show, that you're gonna. You're gonna hear something. Yeah, hear something new. Hear something fresh. Like Oasis, when I first played them. Yeah. That's it. I mean, you know, I'm 37 years old. Oasis was gigantic when when I was in junior high, high school, and mm -hmm. Champagne Supernova and yeah. Wonderwall. How did they get their demo to you? I got it in England when I was there. Really? See, see them record. I saw them playing in a room in a club half the size of this room. It's like the size of English disco almost. Yeah. That was a small place, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they just knew who you were and yeah. got you the tape. And mm -hmm. Alan McGee, their manager. They said, play. How, how would somebody approach you in those days? Like, hi, I'm, I'm Drew Dempsey. I, I work at Sunset Sound. This is a tape. I'd love for you to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And you'd put it in your pocket always? Yeah. Did you ever home. say no? No. Because you yes. wanted it. <laughs> say yeah. yes. Because you never know what could be on there. Was there a lot of bad songs you had a lot heard? of bad songs <laughs> yeah. and then was there ever a bad song and then maybe a year later you heard some other radio station play it yeah there and was kind of yeah. still did make it something yeah kind of yeah any recollection of any band that you yeah. thought wasn't good that maybe came out and was strong God, i can't, can't remember <laughs> <laughs> oh wow those were the days did you see john lennon in this studio one time it wasn't this studio i thought it was it was on um, off of Los. What's that studio off of Oh, uh, the record plant. Record plant. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah he was there. Yeah, yeah, I was talking to Mick Jagger, and I feel these hands behind me, lifting me up in the air. What is this? And I look around, and it's John Lennon picking me up while I'm talking to Mick Jagger. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you were a writer as well back then, too. Yeah, I wrote for Go Magazine, yeah. and then in the 70s, I had a column, weekly column, in, in um, Phonograph Record Magazine, and that was all over the United States, ra different radio stations would present the magazine. W what was your saying? Godhead or something? Godhead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was like the top VIP status, right? Yeah. That comes from George from the Hare Krishna magazine. It was called Back to Godhead. That's the ultimate. Yeah, the, the highest, ultimate. You know, Kim Fowley used to always say that. Like nirvana. Yeah. Basically, it means nirvana. Yeah. Godhead. Tell me the story, though. So that's, you know, John Lennon picks you up. You, But how George Harrison, you took him around town? or? Yeah. My friend and I, uh, Ed Carroff, he's a famous photographer, Famous for shooting the Jimi Hendrix with the fire. Oh, yeah. You know, guitar on fire. Uh huh, and he's raising his hand. Like yeah. That. Ed Karoff and I went to the Rabbi Shankar um, press conference. It was in south of LA. Uh huh. And then after the press conference, we somehow ended up with George and somebody's secretary, um, who's a famous writer. Um, Oh, headquarters. Jerry Hopkins? Yeah, Jerry Hopkins' secretary had this Corvair. You know, it's like a brown Corvair, only seats four people. And, uh, and George 
want to buy some clothes. Where can we go, go to buy some clothes? So, so, um, so me, Ed, and his secretary, and, and George piled into this Corvette <laughs> and drove around Hollywood and went to uh, Fred Siegel's and brought some clothes. That's where the picture was taken. Yeah. And Mark's got the picture. And um, it was there. And then we went to Sat Perouche, an Indian place on Santa Monica Boulevard. And that's where Ed got the idea to shoot Strawberry Alarm Clock's album cover. He wow. shot their cover, first color picture he shot. Incredible. Incense and Peppermints, the album cover. That's, Ed shot that. Yeah, incense and Peppermints, that color. That is still exciting, though. I mean, that's what I love about Sunset Sound here. It's so untouched. You know, we yeah. have a, it's not like even Western, who has switched their names a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You know, East West, now it looks like a Vegas casino in their lobby. They haven't touched the rooms, and I don't want to talk bad about it, them at all. But this is so just organic and best. Only a few buildings left. Yeah. Look what they're doing to the Cinerama Dome. What's going to happen with that? It's sad, isn't it? I know. Does that make you upset? That, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, why do you have to change everything? I know. It's all money, isn't That's it? That's all me and Mark talk about. <laughs> I yeah. did hear a rumor yesterday that IMAX may take over the dome. I oh, did too. Really? Oh, That's wow. That's what I heard. Oh, great. Keep your fingers crossed. And keep it looking the same, yeah. Well, people want to go, when you go to, you know, New Orleans or when you go to Austin, Texas, or when you go to Hollywood, you want to experience those cities. Yeah. And you want to go to the place, you know, the houses that, you know, Axl Rose was sitting on the steps or the place <laughs> where Van Halen recorded, even if you could take a picture. Mm -hmm. What if all that stuff's gone? That's kind of what my documentary's about is, you know, if these recording studios all close, what yeah. will that mean for music? What will that mean for the cities that, you know, house them? Mm -hmm. um, it's like uh, I'm on a, me and Ed are on a back cover of Linda Ronstadt and Stone Ponies and Friends, and it's in front of a house in Venice on Hart Street. And we're in the front of the house with all these people. Wow, I'm going to put a picture of that up. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, I worked with Linda Ronstadt, too. Yeah, I, I, I remember that from your doc. Mm -hmm. She worked in here as well, and with Don Randy also. Yeah. Well, that yeah couple I watched a lot of her record. Actually, I was, I think, it, no, that was at Capitol. I, I was at one of her sessions, and I got a picture of that. She's gorgeous. Recording. Yeah. Do you run into anybody ever? And like, yes. if you're at the Greek theater for a show, do Once you? Once in a while, people come up. That yeah. Comes me and then I mean, you look exactly I the same. I talk to Nancy Sinatra all the time. Yeah, she did a lot of great work with Don Randy as well. And, yeah. Uh, we ran into Johnny Lydon over at the punk. Uh, remember the the punk documentary? Mm-hmm. I got a video of that. That was great. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, are you working on a book also? Well, I'm trying to, trying to do one on the English disco with Mark London and looking for the people who want to put out the book. Sure. Because <laughs> I used to have all these slides and, and all wow. these photographers would always come to the English disco. And you still have all that stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. 40 years later. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why, I mean, that's kind of why I wanted to do this show was just to document the stories. Mm -hmm. from the people that were around during those eras. Yeah. You know, the engineers, the promoters, the record people, whoever was mm -hmm. actually there because just for the reason I said, you know, the reason Hollywood's, you know, kind of just diminishing. I know. What if these stories aren't documented? Yeah. And who's going to know? I want my kids to know about it. And, <laughs> you know, everybody watches YouTube now because it's mm -hmm. the news is garbage. What do you think about the media and news in 2021? Wow. It's just... Just there. <laughs> I, I don't know. About, yeah, I don't do the internet or anything. Yeah. Why don't you do internet? I don't have time. <laughs> really? <laughs> Takes one. To watch a lot of television and you know, you know, see a lot of movies and. Did you see uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Oh yeah, we went to the premiere. Oh really? We're at the ArcLight. Yeah. yeah. And that's mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino's film about. Yeah. Uh, Actually, Tarantino invited us on the set when we were on the set. Fairbanks. Yeah. No way. Jay Sebring Hair Salon. He brought us in. He asked Rodney if that's what it looked like. And Quentin did. Yeah. Very cool. Quentin He's asked you what? It, uh, what? Is this Pulp what it looked like? Soundtracks very influenced from his show. That's yeah. what we heard. But yeah. Yeah, Quentin. Tell you that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Pulp, Pulp Fiction. I I used to play a lot of on my show. I played a lot of surf music. I used to play. Dick Dale and all that. As yeah, well. 
and adventures and Quentin heard all that while he's editing and working in his studio and stuff late at night. So Pulp Fiction soundtracks based on a lot of <laughs> your music that you'd play on the on your radio show. Yeah, that he would hear while working late at night. Does that just totally elate you and move you that Quentin, the, one of the greatest directors ever, is? I know. Yeah. I mean, that would just make my whole life here. Yeah, he's Godhead. <laughs> Another, gr- yeah, he's Godhead. <laughs> we need to make shirts that say Godhead. Yeah. I love it. You know, uh, another great quote is from uh, Mr. Robert Plant that Mm -hmm. said, you get more women than he ever has. (laughs) I I love that picture of you at the old uh, riot house. Yeah. Right down the street, Continental Mm -hmm. Hyatt, and you're Mm -hmm. sitting in front there with the coolest shades on. You got six girls around you. Is that a Cadillac in that picture? Yeah, my own Cadillac. Shot that. Wow. Did all Van photos, right? Yeah. Did yeah, he did all that stuff here too. Uh, they did like a whole photo shoot of them uh, in that corner over here. And that's, that's who shot the shots at the Hyatt House. It was for Cream Stars of the Cars, but I think I uh, just didn't either. It didn't end up getting used or something, right? Yeah, it didn't get used. It's for Cream Magazine. What's your favorite album of all time? If you had, to, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you've been asked this, but if you're on a deserted island. And you had one album to take with you. What would it be? Ronettes. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. And that was done at Gold Star. Yeah. Yep. With Don Randy <laughs> again. Mm-hmm. Of course, any, any of the Beach Boy albums. Were you a giant Beach, Beach Boys Boy? today? Yeah, the big Beach Boys. Fan. What's your favorite Beach Boys song? Um, God, God only knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. She's not the little. In fact, it was one of the first recording sessions I went. She's not the little girl I once knew. Recorded at Western. Yeah. Quarters. Did I'm you like being that. in the studio, seeing the you know the magic kind of take place and how yeah. a records made and? I, I remember Dennis Wilson had a red Ferrari and he said, "I'll take you for a ride in it." So I go in, in his red Ferrari, pull out of Western. He has eight track in his car uh-huh. and he puts on. Leslie Gore doing Sunshine, Lollipops, and Roses. <laughs> <laughs> and Dennis is car, that's what he was playing. Yeah. What, so Ed Karoff did a, he shot the Stooges here. In this floor. room? They're all on the floor, and Ed Karoff shot a. In this, in Studio 2 right here I at Sunset Sound? This, this is exactly like yeah. it, yeah. Unbelievable. You remember the Stooges coming in here? Of course. Yeah. Oh, I could just sit and ask you so many questions. I do want to touch down on Nirvana. So, and also one other question about um, the theater, the Ivar Theater. Do you know the Ivar, which is by R- the old RCA Records, which yeah. is LA Film School, owns that now. Yeah, they used to be Beetle Leedles. It used to be called Beetle Leedles? Mm-hmm. And was it a, a, a club? A, it was a club yeah, in there. Club. Yeah. And that's live music or that's dance? Love used to, used to play and love. hang out. And Great Electra artist. Mm hmm. Incredible, but I heard Nirvana, and then it turned into like a triple X theater in the eighties. Yeah, and then Kurt Cobain wanted to do like an album release in there mm-hmm. because he, I don't know. It was Kurt Cobain. He liked yeah. crazy things. <laughs> when was the first time you heard Nirvana? The Bleach. I think I played the yeah. from the Bleach album. That was uh, the one before Nevermind. Yeah, I believe. Mm-hmm. Did you ever and meet Kurt? Nirvana was too big. Uh, yeah, Co- Courtney introduced me to him. Uh, they played at at Hollywood uh, Fairfax High. I met him at Fairfax High School. You met Nirvana at Fairfax High School. <laughs> yeah. Wh- what were they doing there? Uh, they played. They played there. Did they used to have concerts at Fairfax High? I, I guess so. Yeah. Wow. The and Chili Courtney Peppers all went there. Well, Flea and uh, Kiedis went to Fairfax High. Yeah, and so did Phil Spector. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did um. Any stories with the the Chili Peppers? I mean, they're such an L.A. band. Mm, not really. No? I know that Nina Hagen was really into them a lot. What would you like to see happen with music of today? Mm, I just hope everybody listens to it and buys it and go to the record stores. and. Yeah. At buying. least if you're going to listen to it, purchase it. You know? Yeah. If you and like oranges at a supermarket, you don't just steal them. Why we, got, do? we got the big record store day that's coming up uh-huh. in the next couple of weeks. Did it, was it sad seeing um, Amoeba shut down? Yes. And they've, have you been to the new one or seen it at all? I've been there. Oh, yeah, I haven't been outside for a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, well, I'd love to talk to you all night. I'm sure you probably have some things to do, but I appreciate your time so much. You're just such a legend in this town, <laughs> in the world, really? in the world of music. I, I remember seeing your doc when I was, I don't know, it would have been like 2006, maybe. Yeah. And, and I wasn't too happy with the doc. And was, I liked the people that were in it. How did that come about? Uh, Someone uh, approached you, a producer? Yeah. This guy, Chris Carter, is from Drama Rama. Okay. And then George Hinkenlooper. And they just followed you around for a year or so? Yeah, or? two years. <laughs> wow, it took two years of filming to do that, huh? Yeah. And then what was the event that you guys were at? And it was like you were John Lennon. Everybody was coming up to you. It was like Oh, the K-Rock Weenie Roast. Yeah, was that at the Palladium? No, no, that was the K-Rock Christmas show. It was everybody. Green yeah. Day, David yeah. Bowie. I mean, everybody backstage there, too. It was I like know. yeah. The who's who. And you have all access, so you guys just bring the cameras in there and yeah. start filming? Mm -hmm. That was so cool. But yeah. everybody's like, that's Rodney Bingenheimer. Everybody <laughs> wants to get a picture with you. See, I think... Gwen, you know, Gwen Sapani, she was great. Yeah, she was going nuts. She yeah. was gorgeous, such a talent. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the craziest story you can tell from your club, English Disco? Any kind of story? Oh, wow. Elvis. Oh, yeah. Elvis came in? Yeah. You're a giant Elvis fan, yeah. I know. Yeah, because Rick Stanley, his stepbrother, was a regular at the club, and and... We used to send pictures of beer up to RCA because we had English beer. I didn't know that. Watney's on tap and Bass <laughs> Ale. And you'd send it to the RCA studio for Elvis to drink? Yeah, he was rehearsing at RCA. <laughs> and then he came by. He came the other thank thank me for the beer and all that. Wow, that had to be quite the moment. Had you met him before or seen him, uh, you know? Talk to him ever before that? Uh, a couple of times, yeah. Yeah. And I got a picture with him. And... So when Elvis walks in, was the paparazzi around then? Would they sit outside the English disco? Because, I mean, every night no, there was some... Nobody knew he was coming. Um, in fact, I think David Boy was there. and But David Boy had just left. And then I remember talking to these kids out in front. And they said, yeah, we just saw David Boy leave, and now Elvis is walking in. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the club about the size of this room? Yeah. Not even this big? Maybe if you take out this wall, maybe. Yeah. All the way to the, to the end, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when Zeppelin was in town, they would go right from the airport to your place. They were recording here. They'd be we'd, down there. Give them all free beer. And all. Yeah, you didn't charge them or anything. No. Did you get burnt out at that point when you had to be there every single night or was it we just were closed on Mondays <laughs> so that was your rest up night mm -hmm. anything else that uh, you'd like to share or anything from the studio or mm -hmm. your time in LA mm -hmm. you know the monkeys mm -hmm. came in this studio and recorded as well I'll have to mm -hmm. show you their tape yeah but I mean obviously that was Hal Blaine and the guys playing but they yeah. would Still Don, come down um, to the studio. That's Chip, how you kind Chip of... Chip Douglas on bass. Yeah. But you were Davy Jones' double for a little bit in yeah, some projects. Yeah, double, yeah. And then... Prince and the Popper. Because the Hollywood Reporter was looking for people that looked like Davy Jones or something? Yeah. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> and you got the ben, gig. Ben Frank's types. <laughs> do you have any regrets in life? Stuff you didn't do? Bands you didn't play? Anything? No, there's so many bands, you know. Was there a band that you kind of knew about but didn't play them, and then you're like, oh, I wish I would have been the one to break them? No, because I broke so many bands, it didn't matter. <laughs> Just hundreds of bands. That, yeah, all good bands. Yeah, it's it's I mean, it's fulfilling even when you're uh, you know just show somebody a new band mm -hmm. you know when they're it's just so cool and if they really like it. I can't imagine what it's like when you're doing it for millions and millions of people across the whole world. Yeah, I mean. And you would get people just calling in, requesting. And what's good, when I play a band, uh, on the screen it shows their album covers. Yeah, that's our, that's amazing. I'm so happy that you are still get to be on the radio, and uh, I love that Stephen Van Zandt, uh, did he reach out to you? And He did, yeah. yeah. I was still at K-Rock when he asked me to come and work, and I t had to turn him down because I was under contract. But the day I, that I was let go from K-Rock, that very day, that evening, he called me. Really? Yeah. 
That's pretty special. Mm-hmm. Did um, Bruce Springsteen? Did you ever uh, hang out with him at all? No, never met him. <laughs> really, never met him. That's the yeah. only person, Bruce. If you're out there, it's Rodney said he's got time for you at Canners for a pastrami sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clem Burke, uh, Blondie's drummer, Ellen, his his wife wants to meet Bruce. Bruce, Ellen <laughs> wants to meet you. <laughs> Everybody says that you're such a nice person. I think that's probably also why. You know, you're accepted in so many private circles like Sonny and Cher and mm-hmm. you get to hang out with Led Zeppelin. I think it's just, you're, you know, you're nice. And I think kindness is something that we're lacking nowadays. Yeah. You know, if we're just kind to one another, we stop listening to the government and the media. Yeah. We could really, you know, move mountains and focus on great music and being original and fresh and not trying to imitating mm-hmm. uh, every other person. But I, I can't tell you how much uh, we appreciate you coming in today. And if you ever want to come by for a tour or mm-hmm. need anything from us, uh, just you know, have Mark call or you call the studio. And yeah, I want to get you that Van Halen uh, work order. Yeah. yeah. Can we uh, listen to the um, Van Halen on your radio station one more time? Oh yeah. And David can help you put it in here. Uh, which one? The, the live show? Him? Oh, I mean, they're all so cool.